uh, you know, since uh, that long road trip, I guess, were how, how fatigued were you guys by the end of that? And what was that trip back uh, like uh, from Iowa? I'd say we were pretty tired, um, especially, I think Josh Langford might have got a little tired there. You know, he's coming off, uh, you know, 10-day rest, uh, a couple of guys who were in quarantine. So, um, you know, every team's doing this right now. Teams are going through that same kind of thing. So it's hard, but, um, you know, we got to make sure we're watching guys' minutes and make sure that um, we're taking care of, care of our bodies the best we can because, you know, we kind of came off uh, a quarantine there where, Got to be careful with how many minutes we're playing, guys. But um, you know, you don't really take many more uh, moral victories after a loss. Um, but we we'll take some of those positive things and take it to the next games. We'll go next to Lindsey Huddleston. Thank you, Joey. Um, <clears throat> everyone's having a tough time with COVID, but you know, you had that year off last year. How have you been able to kind of maintain your positive outlook considering having last year off? and the struggles the teams have been having during this COVID season. Yeah, you know, it beats sitting out last year, uh, even though we're going through, you know, pauses, uh, games getting canceled and stuff. Um, you know, it, it beats anything I did last year. So uh, just the fact that we have a season is something that's positive for me. Um, what was the second part of the question? Well, no, you, you got it right there. I appreciate that. All right, I got you. We'll go next to Kyle Austin. Hey, Joe, I know it's not a long break, but even having a couple of days off after the weekend and getting a few practices in, how do you feel like that can benefit you guys going into Saturday here? Yeah, you know, like I said, we got to take a few things that we did past couple of games, uh, the good things we did, look at the film and um, look at the things we can improve in. But I think this team feels like we, we can go on a run here. You know, we got three home games coming up and games that we think we can win. So um, we took a day off yesterday. Now we're going to get back in the court and kind of refresh our minds a little bit after, you know, a tough road trip, but, you know, finally kind of some positive play. We'll go next back to Chris Solari. I was kind of curious. Uh, Nebraska has been off for quite a while. How do you prepare for them? I mean, do you, you have to obviously go back to, to the previous film, I would imagine, but, but how do you prepare to, to what they physically might be coming off the layoff and how much do you think, having done that yourself maybe helps know what they might experience. Yeah, I think you never know. I mean, there's been teams that are dealt with it well, you know, have come back and played pretty good. And there's been teams that haven't played as well. Uh, we'd be one example. So, you know, they could be playing more guys, uh, more, you know, stretched out minutes and stuff. Um, what we got to do is really focus on ourselves. Uh, I think that's a big key for us right now is make sure that we're playing the best of our abilities and, you know, Coach Izzo is always going to have a good scout uh, on the other team for us. So we know he'll, he'll do his job there. So we just got to follow scouting scout report. Um, might be a little bit different. Might be some more guys in their personnel that we might not scout it the first time. But those are kind of things that go into um, a game like this. We'll go next to Audrey Dahlgren from WLNS. Hi, Joey. After the game, Iowa game, Coach Izzo was mentioning how he felt like you guys were going to win that game before it started. And so how can that, I guess, move you forward into this Nebraska game, that mindset, and, and what gave him that belief that you guys were going to win that game? I think it was just our preparation. You know, we, we prepared like we were going to win it. And, you know, you go into every game thinking that you're going to win. Um, and, you know, we came up a little bit short. But uh, those same things are going to carry over in this next game, uh, you know, we're, we're figuring out how to win right now. You know, we took a couple of losses, but uh, this is still, you know, we control what we want to do with this season. Um, and we, we, we want to go on a run here. And that's something that's on our minds. And we're going to do it every day, uh, the steps that need to be taken to get there. Thank you. And we'll go next to Matt Charbonneau. Joey, I know a lot of people around Michigan State, they, they see the 22 straight years, the NCAA tournament. Um, and you look at your record right now, the amount of games left, is that something you guys think about at all? Or is that, would that be putting too much pressure on the one game at a time thing? Is that NCAA tournament thing on your minds at all at this point? Yeah, you got to take it one game at a time. Um, you know, it's, it's as much as you don't want to talk about it, everybody knows it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's go time right now. Like, there's no uh, take a couple losses here and there. Like, we got to start winning games if we want to get 
to the NCAA tournament. And it's not so much just to keep a, a streak alive, but this team has expectations that they want to reach and goals that we set in mind uh, before the season started. So those goals, some of them we can't reach if we don't make the NCAA tournament. All right, Joey, that appears to be all the questions that we have for you. Thank you for taking your time. And we will have uh, Aaron Henry up here shortly. We are uh, about to be joined by Aaron Henry. If we can direct questions for Aaron through the chat, uh, that would be great. Aaron is here. Um, I like this lighting. Yeah. Oh, that, no, it is different. That's what it is. It's usually like right here, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the lighting's a little bit different out in the, uh, out in the recording studios. Uh, Aaron, you can hear us, correct? Yes, sir. All right, we're going to go to uh, Lindsey Huddleston first. Glad you like the new setup, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> you've always talked to us after games, win or lose, and you talk about how you really carry things, uh, you know, on your shoulders. How have you been able to balance uh, being there for your teammates, but just the individual thing that you've been carrying as far as wanting the best out of yourself and your team going forward? Um, I mean, just understanding that. Whatever happens, win, lose, or draw, it's not the end of the world. You know, every day is, is opportunity to grow. Um, winning and losing in games doesn't determine who you are as a person. You know, it's where you grow in diversity. And, I mean, obviously, we're going through a lot as a team. Um, but every day is a grind. Nothing. My, my, my methods, my work ethic won't change. My, my, the way I lead, the way I carry myself. I've, I've learned from the best in Coach Izzo and people past me and before me. So it's... Something that the record looks a little different, but we know how to win. We know what to do to win. And our process and our story is going to be different than everybody else's. And a quick follow-up. I know you guys uh, sometimes just do a whole social media blackout thing, but is there any way that you're keeping out? How are you keeping out everything, all the different noise that's out there? Because it seems like stuff can still creep in some kind of way, whether it's through social media or through someone talking or just, you know, walking walking around. Yeah, I mean, I mean, run across something, I mean, every now and then. Uh, I'm not on it as much, like, just from a, my generation as much as they are. I'm, I'm old school, I like to say. You know, I've been told that before. But, you know, just growing up in this, my generation still in the society we live in, you know, I mean, I, I may run through something, but it's cool. I mean, I don't really, you know, pay attention to that type of stuff. On my timeline, on my feed, is it isn't much basketball. It's more, more current events, you know, my friends from – the past or whatever they're doing. But, you know, if I run across something, I mean, I, I, mean, I ignore it or whatever you want to do with it. But, no, it's not, it's, it doesn't affect me. You know, I, I know who I am 24 hours after day. I know what my job is. I know what our job is and the goal is. And that's how I just try to carry myself. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. We'll go next to Kyle Austin. Aaron, this program always seems to kind of start putting things together around these this time of the year and, and play its best basketball down the stretch certainly happened the first two years that you've been here. What, what kind of needs to happen for that to happen? And what does this group need to do to kind of go on that run like they have before? Um, just continue to be hungry, continue to know that uh, a, a loss doesn't determine us, you know, losses don't define us. We just have to continue to grow. And obviously with the last game, it was, we took some baby steps, but 
those those winning plays, those things that we have to do to finish games, close games, are our next step. And I feel like that's an area we can grow in. We got some home games coming up. Those will be big for us, not on the road. So we can maybe put some things together and you know, let's 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 have fun. We'll go next to Chris Solari. Aaron, you kind of mentioned that the baby steps at, at Iowa. Um, knowing where you were at maybe on, on Thursday and Sunday in those games and then playing the, the, the way you guys did there and, and nearly getting to win, I guess, how, how do you mentally manage that in terms of, uh, you know, being maybe disappointed that you lost, but knowing that you played better? I mean, what have the last few days of processing that been like? Just knowing we can compete with anybody. Um, that's, the, that's the main thing that, you know, those ugly losses that we had were just ugly losses. You know, they, they don't define us. They happen, can't ignore them, but we can't have them. But, you know, we can play with anybody. We can compete and we, we can win a lot. We should have won, I feel like, a lot of those games if we do the things that I know we can do. But with all that being said, none of that matters if we, doesn't, if we don't win. But like I said, I'm, I'm comfortable in our skin, my skin, and how this team is moving. Um, you know, I'm just eager to get better every day. What was the frustration level knowing that you did play better in that game and still didn't win? Uh, it was it was high for me because I'm just so competitive. But, you know, just knowing that, it's, again, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we still have room we can grow. We still have games left. We still have things to do, ways to compete. And just knowing that we got better. You know, I've, 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 I, got, I like to compare it to like a workout to where like I know that if I come in the gym, you know, and my shot's not falling early, I can work through myself through the workout. And as long as I know by the end of the workout, I got better than what I came in, whether it's my mental standpoint or however I shot the ball, just to stay sharp, you know, it's, it's all about the growth, you know, and that sometimes isn't determined by the win or the loss. We'll go next to Matt Charbonneau. Hey, Aaron, I asked Joey a little bit about this, but, you know, you look at your conference record and you realize you can't get it all back at once. It's kind of a one game at a time thing. When you're in that mode, do you allow the NCAA tournament possibilities creep in your head at all? Is it best to try and put that out of your mind and just worry about each game at this point? I mean, of course, it's going to creep into your mind, but, you know, the, the best thing you can do is just focus on the now, the immediate future. We got Nebraska on Saturday. And uh, that's that's something that, like you said, you can't get it all back at once. That's that's a great line, but that's something that we have to focus on. You can't get it all back at once, and we have to just take it one game at a time, and the rest will take care of itself. Is is that hard to do when you, you feel like you want to do something big and, and get right back in it, but know that it doesn't happen overnight? I mean, yeah, you can get hungry like that. I mean, you can you can. It's good to feel like that, though. I mean, it, it shows that you care. I mean, it, it it's definitely uh, hard to not look at it like that, but you know. You look at it like that in a long span, and you forget what's coming up to you right now. And I think that's the, the most important thing is we look, we look too far down the line. Now we have Nebraska Saturday, and we have practice today. Let's win the day. That way we can win for the ne for the, the next couple games. We have time for a couple more questions with Aaron. We'll go first to Stephen Brooks, and then wrap it up with Audrey Dahlgren. Hey, Aaron. Uh, when we talk to Tom a lot, he mentions just the sort of like general stress that comes with playing this season and everything you guys have to go through in terms of testing and trying to stay away from people. You're not really on campus with a bunch of other folks. Just there's so many things obviously that are different about this year. Um, have you felt that or have you noticed your teammates feeling that? I mean, could you just sort of describe what that whole part's been like of, you know, waiting for a test and hoping it's not you and, and all the other things that go into this and then just sort of like I said, that overarching stress that, uh, that Tom has talked about a couple of times. Uh, those those things may play a factor for other people, but uh, for me, I mean, it's it's life. I mean, it's it's what our, it's what we call normal now. I mean, everybody wants to go back to how COVID was bef before COVID became, and uh, it's just you can still keep keep thinking about it like that. Like, when is when is when are things going to be normal? When will things come back to life? Like, no, like this is what it is. You can't keep wishing for for something that may never come. You know, you got to live in the present and make the most of your opportunity right now. So as far as the testing goes, um, not seeing people, just that, the whole, how, how all that goes, I mean, yeah, it's different, but it is what it is. I like guess it's, it's the facts. Like, I, I'm, I have no other answer for that, honestly. I got you. Thanks, man. We'll wrap it up with Audrey Dahlgren. 
Hey, Aaron, after you guys, you know, the last couple of games have been difficult offensively other than the Iowa game. And so what's the biggest factor or contributor to that you guys were able to have such success when it comes to shooting in that game? Um, you could probably point to a lot of different things, but I just feel like guys were, were just into it. Guys had energy, guys had confidence, guys were just locked in and dialed in. And that's something that we had to have for the, for the rest of the season for if we're going to be successful. And it was good to see those shots going for a number of players. But, you know, we, 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 uh, we want to win. And I, that's, that's just it. We just want to win. And how much, I mean, a lot of shooting is sometimes can be mental at some point. And so, I mean, just how much does that just boost your confidence? It's a simple question, but going into this game against Nebraska. Uh, shooting is, is, is confidence, really. That's all it is. And just seeing those shots going, I mean, it can help us mentally, you know, and and for the future and the tournament and stuff. But that game, you know, shots shots went in for others, but, you know, it's we just want to win. Like, that's, that's all we want to do. Thank you. Yeah. Aaron, thank you so much for taking your time. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. And we'll have Coach uh, Izzo up shortly.
joined by Coach Izzo now. And uh, Coach, uh, if you'd start with an opening statement. Yeah, I mean, I'll start with uh, something that's not basketball since it just hit all of us uh, that uh, the news on what Matt Ishbia has uh, done uh, for our university, for our program, for me in particular, is about as humbling and as um, sort of tear jerking as anything that has happened to me. Um, I know there's a press conference tomorrow and I'm going to go over a lot of stuff then, but uh, with the uh, release early, I just, uh, I can only say that I can't thank him enough. I think some people, um, you know, when, when things are going bad and I look at uh, some things I've done here over the last couple of years to donate some things and do some things, because when things are going bad is when people really need you and uh, not when things are going good. You know, I get phone calls from Mateen all the time when we lose, I never get anything when we, when we win. And I think, uh, you know, Matt looked at a time when, geez, universities are all struggling. Um, our uh, athletic department is struggling and our country's struggling. And he just, uh, he just came through uh, when uh, times are, our toughest and uh be honest with you that's uh i'm just gonna need a little time i'm gonna use tonight to uh really get my thoughts together because what he's done is is so incredible that right now words can't express it as far as uh our team goes you know we're coming off a week um that no doubt we needed a day off yesterday uh, the three games in five or six days and staying on the road there and kind of practicing but not practicing um, has been difficult. Now we got a few home games where at least we can practice and be here. There's no denying that it's been a tough stretch for us, but I thought our effort in the last two games has improved. I thought our play has improved. Our shooting has gotten better, but not marketably better and I think that'll be the last step that could make the difference in winning some of these games and not as far as Nebraska goes you know there's only been three teams so far that have come back off COVID we were one Penn State was one and now Nebraska uh, is is the third one and you know Michigan will have to do it although they don't have any players that have it they've still had some time away and it is difficult uh you know fred and i talked you know during the time when they went down and uh but uh we were able to grind out a win at their place that was almost a month ago uh had a great game from aaron henry 27 points we'll need to get help from others i think josh is in a lot better place right now as far as uh you know it took some time to get him back then unfortunately he got back and he was playing pretty well. And then the COVID thing hit him. And uh, I think he's practiced three times full since January 7th. And uh, so, uh, you know, we have to still get him some rest every now and then, which we're going to do today. He'll be able to practice full go tomorrow and play Saturday. But uh, Nebraska has a couple of guys that did give us problems. Teddy Allen had 23 and that McGowan's kid had 20 and both guys, uh, Allen can shoot the ball from anywhere. He's got an awkward shot. It just goes in. Uh, he's, he's a very, very kind of a European type player. He's got the step arounds. He's got the long threes, um, very effective. And McGowan, I think is one of the better guards in our league. You know, he's, quick he can shoot it he shot pretty well in our game but he's lethal on their fast break he's kind of like a one-man fast break and he pushes it so um hopefully today we'll have a good practice tomorrow everybody's spirits are up even though we're disappointed um i think the news of matt will bring a little life to our team and uh we're ready to go we'll go first uh with questions from matt Charbonneau. 
Tom, I assume as far as you know, at this point on Thursday, everything's good to go for Saturday with Nebraska and where they're at. That's a good point, Matt. Uh, yeah, I'm 99% sure. You know, like I said, I've talked to Fred before. I know they've been practicing. Uh, I think they had so many people that had it. I don't think, um, you know, if somebody else gets it, I don't think it would change anything. But uh, that is kind of the question that never gets asked in any press conference over the last, and now we're starting to see more teams, Louisville, this team. And um, so I guess, like I told I think some of you there's so much pressure on these kids it was the last couple of weeks when we've been on the road and we test day of the game you know I see some guys come back to the bus and give it one of these you know whew, I made it you know and I didn't realize that kind of pressure or strain was on them and I I've said this to, I think you I've said it nationally I don't think it's the COVID they're worried about as much as the 17 days they'll miss and uh, that's a lot on these kids. And uh, but as far as I know, um, I think we're both raring to go. And I'm sure he's excited to get back on the court also. And, and I want to ask you, too, about obviously, you know, where your record's at now and as competitive as these guys are. How do you balance all the good things you saw from the other night with also understanding you didn't quite get over the hump? But, you know, it's just still trying to build on that without being down about a four game losing streak or any of those things. Yeah, I think it's a it's a fair question because um, it doesn't do any good to play better. Sooner or later, you got to win games, and uh, and that's kind of exactly how I said it to the team in the locker room after. Um, you know, we did some good things. Uh, we still missed some good shots. We still missed a couple of good passes. Uh, we missed some free throws from guys that don't normally miss them. It doesn't take much, and you win that game. But you got to find a way to win a game. And I think that is, uh, you know, the bottom line of this whole thing. I, I think our players understand that. I think they know what they've been through. I mean, we could have been very, very good and lost those three road games. Very good and lost those three road games. So I think they understand who we're playing and what we're doing. But I also think uh, maybe they don't understand that these little things and making a wide open shot or free throw or free throw cut out like cost us a little bit a little bit in Iowa of course a lot against Purdue uh, those things matter and those are the little things that every coach always says the little things matter so we're working on that we'll go next to Lindsey Huddleston hey Tom you kind of alluded to it when you said you're going to do some reflection later on based on tomorrow's huge announcement congratulations on that I'm just curious during this tough stretch is there any way you can have even a greater appreciation for your national championship, greater appreciation for your Big Ten championship now that you kind of have a moment to reflect back and look at it a little differently now with what's happening right now? No, <laughs> I don't yet. That's a great question. And I think I will when I really reflect back, you know, at the end of the year. I mean, right now I'm so – I, I don't think we're that far away. You know, and that sounds crazy. We've had some bad games. We've played bad. But, you know, you look at last night. I mean, I never seen so many teams lose. You know, I watched Villanova lose to a, you know, a team that wasn't very good. I watched uh, Georgetown beat Creighton, and Georgetown hadn't won many games. I, I, I just saw so many different games. I mean, it's, it's just the way it is right now. So I couldn't tell you what it's going to take to get in the tournament, what it's going to take to win the Big Ten. Um, I just think there's a lot of unknowns. And uh, I do appreciate, you know, I, funny because I talked to Mateen this morning, he called, and I, I appreciate um, what it takes to win and how much leadership and good point guard play and you got to make shots. You can't make the little things do matter. I, I think that's what I reflected back on. I reflected back on the war game. You know, we did it last week. We went at it three times a day. We rebounded better. You know, um, it'd be easy for someone to say, well, why didn't you do it all year? And I gave you the millions of reasons why we don't. But I think, Lindsay, my real reflection will come when the year is over. But uh, I had enough guys that call me former players. You know, this is when um, hopefully our family is at its best. You know, we got a guy that's giving an amount of money that, hell, I told him, you instead of giving it here, you could buy the whole UP with that. And, uh, 
you know, including the bridge, I think. But uh, it's, uh, it, it gives me great pride to know that people think of you and think of your program and think of what you do as a university that has impacted their lives enough to do something like that. And as I said, you know, Mateen, he called, a lot of guys are calling and texting and um, it just makes me realize there's a way that it's gotta be done. Well, maybe we weren't able to do all of that this year and it affected us a little bit more because of a lot of things, but we're still in a position right now where most of our guys have had it. We're hoping there's not a round two for them. We're hoping we can start moving forward. We're hoping that that I coach a little better and they play a little better. And between the between all of us, we kind of grow, you know, and that's that's what's happened. You know, it was Miles that sent me a text the other night that said that, you know, with coach, we were 11 and nine my first year, you know, we won eight out of 10 or whatever we did, you know, and that's kind of the mentality that we're trying to look at moving forward. Thank you. Well, next, Kyle Austin. A um, couple of things. First, real quick, do you expect Gabe to be available on Saturday? You know, he's supposed to work out a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, and Sunday or Saturday is his first day uh, of being able to play. But uh, I, I really don't know. You know, I, I, I tried to learn from Josh's and Marty's, and the one thing I learned is being in the weight room riding a bike as you're, you know, you have those three, four days to move forward. Um, I'm not sure it's as good idea as maybe running sprints because uh, there's something about game situation. Like I think Josh is in decent shape cardiovascularly, but I think his legs aren't there with him yet. And the only way you get your legs there is that stop and go action. So we're gonna try to do a little better job with, with uh, Gabe as far as that goes. I know he's dying to play. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does today, just moving around, maybe in the gym alongside of us. And if he can do anything tomorrow, as far as, you know, they give you those two, three days to work back. Um, I'd probably know more by then. And, and then I wanted to follow up too, if I could, on something you said after Iowa, just about um, kind of how hard you've pushed these guys this year and, and how difficult has that been for you to know how to coach guys and how much have you had to kind of change your approach um, um, in coaching these guys under these circumstances? Well, I think it's the biggest question that a lot of coaches around the country are asking themselves and asking each other. I'd probably talk to more coaches this year than ever. I probably had more meetings with players than ever, uh, but nobody looks at it that way, you know, like a player, you know, I mean, they don't realize the things when I when I said how long it had been since we played the war game, you know, when we started practice, uh, it was six months, you know, we usually play it all summer. And, uh, and, and I think you don't realize it till you go through it. But, uh, you know, when I say push them, uh, they got to push themselves too. But I got, you know, holding people accountable, there's no reason we lose a game because of a free throw cutout. Uh, you know, that just can't happen. And that's on me. And, uh, and then, you know, we've had a couple other games where we've made those kind of mistakes that almost never happen. And we work on it every day before a game, that day of a game, we work on that. So it is a point of emphasis, but, uh, you know, maybe it's not demanded enough. Maybe it's not harped on enough, uh, so I feel good about where I'm at too. Now I had meetings with players all this whole trip, you know, and I, I told them, you know, things got to get a little tougher. I think they know it, but you guys probably know this. Those of you that have kids, you have a wife, you have friends. Um, it's a tough time what they're going through and tougher than even I am aware of at times. Uh, and especially at 20 and, uh, so every coach is trying to worry about where the kids are mentally. And, you know, now school started back up. I had my first academic meeting uh, today after the couple of weeks of the startup so that find out where they are and what's going on. They've got so much stuff on their plate that even a jerk like me gets uh, a little compassionate, shows a little empathy. And, but I think, you know, I said, I got to take the gloves back off because, um, we got games to win and, and I just got to explain it to them better. So that's why, man, I met with guys on the plane 
going to Iowa, coming back from Iowa, in Iowa, and meetings that night, the next day, just to try to still help them understand, I know you're going through a difficult time, but there's still only certain ways that you can win games, and that's what we've been doing. Go next to Chris Solari. Hey, Tom. Um, I wanted to, do you have any updates yet on the other games that you guys have that might be rescheduled, or is it kind of just yeah. the limbo of, of thinking maybe three games a week, sometimes possibly four? Oh, I'm, I'm definitely expecting that. You know, I'm definitely expecting that. But no, we haven't. Uh, I talked to KP about it this morning. You know, the problem is you got a team like Michigan right now. I don't think anybody knows when they're coming back for sure. And so because of that, you know, I mean, we're scheduled to play them twice. So that pushes a lot of things back there. They've still got to play. Um, I think it's Iowa. They haven't played yet or Illinois uh, or us. I, I don't know if they, I, Ohio State, I don't think. So they're going to have a lot of games too. I don't know how many they missed out on. I haven't really looked at that. I got enough issues myself, but, but they're just one team. And then, you know, I, I think the conference is looking at, we still have so many conference games and before we start going to three and four a week, we want to try to see where everybody is. The minute that happens, you know, maybe some other team goes down. Uh, you know, that's the hardest part of this whole thing right now. So there's actually been zero, probably because we have scheduled games that are, you know, in a time slot where we came back from Tuesday, we're on the road. Um, other teams couldn't play like Thursday, or maybe we'd have played a Thursday, Saturday. We play Saturday, then I think we play Tuesday, and then I think we could start funneling some games in there somewhere. But uh, that's up to KP, the Big Ten office. I've already accepted that there might be four games a week. There could be back-to-back -back games. Um, you know, I just don't know. Is, is there a chance that the Big Ten tournament gets wiped out? Um, and have you heard anything about the move to Indianapolis. I saw a report today that it's been more or less finalized that you guys will go to there. Chicago. Well, I heard rumors out there looking at that just because of the situation in Chicago, to be honest with you, um, just because that's one of the states or one of the cities that's been hit hard. Um, I did not know it was finalized. As far as the Big Ten tournament goes, uh, I think there's been national talk on all these tournaments on what happens. Um, and, and again, that will definitely be uh, out of our hands. Uh, I think that'll be conference offices, ADs, presidents. I, I, I'm on one committee that we've talked about it and uh, with, you know, the 10 coaches all over the country and, and everybody's got some concerns. I mean, why wouldn't you? You know, there's everything we do is to try to keep the fewest amount of people from touching our players more or less. And then all of a sudden you're in a conference tournament where you're somewhere and there's 14 teams and in some states you might have some fans there. And so I just don't know what they'll do with it. Um, as of right now, I'm 90% sure they're playing it as of right now. I heard the same rumors as you that they were looking on moving it to Indy. Um, that would make sense if Chicago's beat up a little bit and under the protocol Indy would have as far as uh, facilities and everything, uh, since they seem to have one of the best in the country, hotels close, different venues to play in, things like that. We'll go next to Brendan Quinn. Hey Tom, two for you. Uh, just to follow up there, I know a lot of coaches have been asked about this idea of you know the potential of some teams opting out, right? If everyone does go along with their conference tournaments, um, you know, if you're Gonzaga, whatever, you know, who doesn't really need it, um, not putting yourself at risk. What would be your thought on some teams, if the tournaments are held, some teams who don't need those games deciding to make individual decisions to opt out? You know, I mean, we've had a lot of women's programs that are already opted out of the season. I think there'll be some men's ones that do opt out and having a season. We've had players opt out from playing in bowl games. Uh, who knows? We could have players opting out for playing in NCAA tournament games. Um, it's a crazy time, uh, Brendan, and, and I, I don't know what will happen there. Uh, 
I would hate to play a tournament where everybody wasn't involved. I, I would, but I, I do understand you gave maybe the best example of all, you know, would you be the number one overall seed if they remain like they are? Go to Vegas playing a tournament where there's three or four other tournaments going on and just being in Vegas alone is no insult to the Vegas people, but a little shakier by the way that everybody moves around there. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't blame a team. I just, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that we'll all do what's right. You know, I, I think we have TV partners that, you know, have had it tough. Everybody's had it tough. So how do you make it fair for everybody? And uh, boy, that, that's a decision I couldn't make right now. But I, if I was one of those teams, and you can look at it the other way. If you're one of the, the teams like we are right now, if you, if you might need the tournament to fight your way into it. But I would just hope we did what was best for basketball. Uh, not Michigan State, not Gonzaga. What is best for basketball? And if one of those is you have a choice and everybody understands that, then I think that's what's what's best, you know. Uh, but it would be hard if we had a tournament and two or three of our best teams weren't in it. That seems like it would be a difficult thing too. But if that's what they decide to do, I'd like to play as many games as I could play within the safety and protocol that we have in our league and our university. And uh, that means I'd love to play in the Big Ten tournament. I'd love to play every Big Ten game we can. Uh, beginning of the year, there were guys on the committee I was on that predicted we'd get 20 games in. You know, right now, if we just schedule the games we've gotten, we'd get, we'd get 23 in. If we get to reschedule some of those games, it might be 24. If they don't, 20 might be a number. You know, I, I don't really know. I just like to play as many as we can, as long as the players are as safe as they could be, which to me still means playing here is safer than being out on the streets. We have a couple more questions in the queue. We'll go first to Larry Leish. Hey, Tom, now uh, maybe premature for this, but is there a Big Ten talk of like, let's let's reduce the number of games that are that we're going to have everybody play because getting all the scheduled games is looking unlikely? There hasn't been that I know of. Um, I, I think, like I said, I think what you'd see instead, I think you'd see three and four games a week, you know, and uh, or you might even see a, a back-to-back -back game, you know, like if you're playing at Rutgers and it was the, you played them twice and it was the first time, you know, maybe you and Rutgers decide, hey, we'll play both games there, one right after another and then fly home, you know, or maybe if, if it was somebody here that we haven't played yet, we play both games here and, and then you fly home. I mean, I, I've heard all those kind of thoughts. I think everybody's trying to do what's best, but I, I give the basketball uh, groups credit. I think they agree that everybody's trying to get as many games in as we can. Don't worry about what's fair and unfair because you're not going to win that battle. It's, you know, we just played six out of nine on the road. We just played three games in six days on the road coming off COVID. Is that fair? No, it's not. If it was unhealthy for the players, then I think we got to do something about it. But as of right now, we don't think it's unhealthy. It's just not, it's not as conducive for everybody. But I think that stuff's going to happen there. I really do. And I, I don't think they're going to try to cut that schedule back yet. But I'd say in the next two weeks, if another team or two goes down, a whole team, um, there's going to be issues for sure where they're going to have to make some, some tough decisions. A uh, quick follow-up and loaded question. How are you holding up with everything that's going on? Well, you know, Matt Ishbia made my day better. Um, but I'm, I'm good. I really am. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't say that, you know, I, I'm disappointed in where we're at. I understand some of the reasons why we're at. Some of the reasons I don't understand are things I got to take responsibility for. And, uh, you know, in this league, you don't get to get healthy very often. You know, and that's the problem. I mean, if you're not playing really well, you're probably not winning. 
and uh, I've watched some of these other conferences and uh, I'm not happy with some of our losses, but we've had less losses against teams that maybe we should have beat than a lot of teams have right now. And it's, it's just the nature of the beast that's keeping these kids on an even keel um, the best you can. It's pushing them, but understanding you can only push so far. It's not pampering them because it's a sport that takes it. And realize in the Big Ten, for all of you, there's just no conference even close. Now, that sounds arrogant and egotistical, but I think it's the truth. I think it's the best conference, and it's the best conference because we do have top to bottom. Well, we don't only have a lot at the top, but we have good teams at the bottom, too. We'll go next to Jack Ebling. Tom, uh, back to Matt for a minute. When you have a walk-on who's never walked away and never learned the meaning of can't, uh, what's the lesson? What do you tell your players about a team approach to life? I told, I was thinking of telling Matt that if he would have made that layup on the last shot of the championship <laughs> game, maybe he would have had a future in basketball and he wouldn't have made half the money that he's making as a entrepreneur in business. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think it is, it's, it's, you know, you get to live your dream. I mean, uh, Matt was a very motivated individual. You know, it's funny because his last year, you know, he sat right next to me on the bench because I think he was looking at getting into coaching. And I, like, like Jack Hoiberg, I enjoyed his perception of what was going on. He had a very good feel for things. So he kind of sat right next to me uh, for a lot of those games. And uh, I, uh, I said, man, it's a good thing he didn't go into coaching because he's done uh, very well for himself. And I really appreciate the way he's taken care of a lot of our former players and some football players. You know, he's, I, I think he appreciates where he was at, where he's going, some of that money going into um, future endeavors for athletes here is really uh, not only much needed and uh, but over needed, um, you know, guys that aren't, pro basketball or football or hockey or baseball players, you know, or ladies that aren't pro uh, basketball or volleyball players. Uh, this is going to give them a center and a chance to, to uh, get into business world. That's been so important to Matt and his dad, uh, you know, his dad's got to be proud as hell. I mean, uh, I remember often his dad and my dad being at uh, final fours during those three years, two years. And, uh, Spent a lot of time talking, and I think his dad will be proud because Matt did something. He took a business, and he took it to another level. And, uh, you know, that would make, uh, if, if I'm Jeff, I'd be, I'd be very proud of that. We have one more. We'll wrap it up with a question from Audrey Dahlgren. Hey, Tom, this is a bit of a cliche, maybe, but they say that teamwork makes the dream work. And Mel was telling us yesterday that you were very instrumental in bringing Keon Coleman or having Keon Coleman sign with the football program. And so what do you envision for him when it comes to your program? And what have those conversations been like with Mel? First of all, I, I think that because I've been here a long time, you know, Matt gives me credit on what I did for his business. I couldn't, I couldn't even... I have trouble figuring out everything his business contains, you know, and then Mel uh, gives me credit because, you know, last summer um, when they started recruiting him or even earlier than that, he had an interest in basketball. So I called and we got some film and we did some checking up on him and he was kind of, he's kind of a cool kid that he just keeps talking, you know, and he kept calling all the time. And, uh, and sure enough, um, you know, I knew we were getting back in the hunt with him because I thought we were out of it. And I walked out of my uh, my shoot around at Iowa and I look at my phone and and Keon Coleman's uh, had texted me. So I read the text. I gave him a buzz and he told me that he really felt like he was thinking of coming here the next day. And uh, so I talked to Mel and uh, that was pretty exciting, you know, and as far as his basketball I said, a lot of people talk about people playing both. We've done it here at Michigan State. We did it with Nick Saban. We did it with Smith. We did it with Antonio. We've, we've done it here. And, uh, and, you know, who knows what that'll bring for Keon. But what I know Mel 
for sure gave him the opportunity. And I know I sure gave him the opportunity that he will be able to try that if that's what he wants to do. As we know, very few kids are capable because everything's gotten to be such individual work now with each sport. But uh, I love two sport guys. I've loved two sport guys since, since I was one myself in a very small, small school. But I, I've always uh, appreciated guys that played football. I think it's still a tougher sport that when you got one of those kind of guys around, I think it benefits you. So hopefully Keanu will finish out this year, get here and uh, let Mel beat him up a little bit and then send him over to me for some rehab. Thank you. Coach, that's everything we have. All right. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Max.